Ladies and gentlemen, Kay Kim here. Welcome to the daily update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Market is up, it's actually down. I think because uh, market has been up like almost every single day last week uh, or last couple weeks. Um, so the market is actually down, uh, but it's uh, it's pretty much flat day. 0.07% uh, down on the S&P. Nasdaq pretty much flat. Looks like semis up a little bit. Dow flat. Russell's down 0.6. Transport is flat. Energy sector did catch some bit there. Uh, we got the banks up about 2%. Biotech's down too. Uh, Bitcoin, grayscale Bitcoin is up about 3%. Gold and silver is down a little bit. VIX is up about 7 So let's stick with the... Uh, 65 minute spider here, S&P 500 ETF. So, um, so let's, uh, first of all, it looks like we initially gapped up and then we faded it. So um, gap up and fade is never really a bad thing. It's actually much worse if you see a gap down and then fade, right? So you can see a gap up and fade. Because a lot of times when he gaps up and fade, there's gonna be that much more cushion when it coming when it comes down. Just think about like you when, when you're trying to push it down, like you have to jump up and push down, right? It's much harder to jump up and push it down. So um it's better, obviously. Gap up is always good for the bulls. You know, obviously, gap down is always good for the bear, especially if you're in an uptrend. Gap up is always good, especially when we're on a downtrend. Gap down is always good. Obviously, at some point there will be some exhaustion gaps and things like that. But you know what I mean? Like we we something that we talk about here, when we're in an uptrend, you never want to look at that one element in technical analysis and say, Oh, look at that, there's an exhaustion gap. Oh, look at that, that's uh that's uh you know hammer reversal or hangman reversal candle. I see it all the time. People always trying to call things. And, and we talked about how that's the most difficult thing you want to do because you want to give respect to this trend that we've been in quite a bit. So looking at 65 minutes are here, we gapped up fluctuation. We It looks like gapped up, faded it, filled the gap, got back up. That's why you see that long lower wick. It means it's, it gapped up, pulled back, filled the gap, and then we saw dip buying activities there, got up here, but on the second hour, we came back down, and it's been retesting this uh, kind of a micro-term pivot here. That was that gap up level also from the 10th of February. And so that's the level that we're seeing. Also, this level, this level, right? That's a prior resistance, prior resistance acting as new support. Pretty basic, uh, you know, technical level uh, acting as support today. Nothing crazy here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Maybe we can get a little bit better idea where we're at because we almost always want to look at the things like a broader term so we can kind of get, get that bigger picture so obviously my short-term moving average is still rising with the rising pivot we got that higher lows and higher highs here so are we still in a uptrend as of today Yes, we're still in an uptrend, right? We still got that higher lows, higher highs. We still got that my short-term moving average rising. We're still above the rising pivot. And as of today, as of now, we are holding these micro-term uh, resistant as potentially new support. Is this a, some kind of a bull pennant, bull flagging type of pattern before breaking out? It's all. It's, it's possible. It's possible, right? And, you know, these kind of short-term, micro-term setups is always kind of, I always look at them like 50-50. It could break out to the upside. It could break down to the downside. I never trade off of those so short-term, micro-term uh, setups there. But I've been tweeting things out today because I did recognize that there was a bearish divergence forming on my 65 minute oscillator i must warn you though and i'm not warning about this bearish divergence i am war not warning i am admonishing you that your position trade if you're a position trader and a long-term investor a lot of my clients watch this too on a daily basis this bearish signal or quote unquote on this 65 it does not apply to our overall long-term, longer-term objective. This isn't something we're gonna be freaking out about. You know what I mean? So, however, I mean, obviously, you know, it's nice to know. 
like what we could potentially face going into tomorrow, maybe even remainder of this week, we may see some turbulence, right? And that's kind of what we're seeing here. This does not mean for position traders and long-term investors, it's not a sell signal in a way that you're gonna just completely like, you know, raise cash, go to 50% cash at this point. No, this is maybe a good time for those position traders and maybe even some long-term investors that if you got some of those aggressive positions, right, that you got into some call options or something like that, or you've been holding some of those triples, and maybe you wanna take some off, but you still wanna hold majority of this because since March lows until now, we must got this bear. This is on the 65 minute chart. Probably, I don't know how many times, 20 times, you know, and if you if you thought every time we saw this bearish divergence, again, if you're a long-term trade investor and a position trader, then you would have missed out much bigger move to the upside. So again, if you're a position trader and long-term investor, so you're my client, it's not a, 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 any kind of signal to start freaking out about. Just know that we could see some volatilities this week. So um, just kind of looking at here in the last month and a half or so going all the way to January, as we can see, right? Because we're middle of February now. So about a month and a half, we did see three incidents where we did have that bearish divergence forming, right? So let me just give you a quick, you know, back test result here. So it looks like, you know, we had this little double top and a bearish divergence here moment back in mid-January. Guess what? It only lasts a day. It did fall. We did initially gap down, right? And then I could, I, I think I remember back in January, a lot of people are freaking out, especially on social media. They always do, right? Freaking out, bears coming out. There's a gap down. The crash is coming. We're going to see 30% corrections. And boop, two days later, back to new all time highs. So this really didn't pan out. One day decline going right back to the uh, all time high level two days later. That just not so much a signal there, correct? So let's observe the second one, Jan late January here. So this one actually, this was actually much steeper divergence too, as you can see, and it's clean, it's more potent, right? It's clean, it's much lower, it, that, that lower high is much definitive, and this is, this is a little bit more higher high. There's a little more angle to that high here. This is kind of like almost eco high, right? So that was weak. Bear subversion. This one's a little bit more has potency to it. We gap down this time, and then so whole day it was down day, and then a second day we rallied, and then a third day we came back down. So that downturn only lasted three days, and we've been going up for how many days? Two weeks. Two weeks. So if you're so concerned about this bearish divergence and the shenanigan that we saw for two, three days, you missed out two weeks of buying opportunities because you're scared. Again, if you're long-term investors, investor and position traders, you know what I'm saying? Like, and again, like I've talked about this on the weekend video that at the market made a big move and it's been grinding. So many stocks were breaking out. So many stocks were breaking out last week while the like market has been just kind of moving sideways and such a good deal for long-term investors to hold through these kind of climate because especially because long-term investors, you know what I'm saying, they hold a lot of these individual stocks along with like index fund, you know, maybe some ETFs and stuff like that, but also they hold a lot of individual stocks. And so even here at Traders Club, you know, uh, myself uh, and also my clients, we hold a lot of, lot of individual stocks. And, and, and last week, in market was just being moving sideways. I remember we're just, we're seeing Twitter breaking out, uh, Intel making some move also, Baidu just keep going higher, FedEx made a move. And so there's been stock like Zoom made a move, Interactive Brokers, and out of these stocks, they were just kind of like not doing well. They, I mean, they've been like, they, they've been maybe grinding and, and maybe, and something like Baidu has been going up and just relentlessly. And a lot of bank stocks actually moved up today also because I think Bank America is up 3%, which I also own. I mean, I pretty much own all bank stocks that I accumulate in March lows. And so this is an environment that, um, you know, as this market, I mean, obviously we don't know when that big correction is coming. And it's a foolish errand to trying to figure out when that big correction is coming. Because remember, market can correct through time or price or it can keep going higher. So 
So you would have a higher probability of being long in an uptrend than being short. Because the only way you're going to make money on the short side is that if that thing comes down perfectly whenever you enter. Because a lot of times when people go short, they usually use out of the money, short term, put options, and those things can like evaporate very, very quickly. Anyway, so we got that divergence here now. It's It has some angle to it. But it's a little grindy. So what I mean by a little grindy, you got peaks here, here, here. And then we got like this two and then this. So this is clean. This is clean. That's a clean like boom, came down, boom, and then came. This one is a little, you know, you know what I mean? But the angle is there though. The angle is here. Obviously, this is higher high. And that's higher high and there's a lower low. Definitely there's an angle there. So it has a, some kind of a similar characteristics of this one. So we may see some turbulence or maybe it can be nullified, potentially coming back down here to retest. So that's what I'm saying is these signals can appear, but sometimes it will play out. Sometimes bulls will fight what they will do is just, just consolidate or we'll see a little bit of pullback and then go up again. Call pullback and, and by doing so, what it's doing is it's gonna like let this oscillator like do this and then like, and, and just nullify the whole thing and make bears exhausted. And then you know what the bulls like to do? Consolidate, boom, and just bring it right back up. So despite the fact that we have this bears divergence uh, here, and as a, and obviously you guys know that I'm a long term I'm a, I'm a position trader and a long term investor. I want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, but at the same time, because of this uh, signal that we saw today, you know, I, I want to be cautious with my uh, aggressive position. I did mention on the overall, you know, on the weekend video that I've been closing out my spider calls, Nasdaq calls you know, Russell 2000 calls and things like that. And again, I've been buying those since October lows. So, I mean, I, those are, that's my position trading positions, right? So I've been holding like what, November, December, like four or five months. And that's that's a sweet spot for, for position traders. So obviously I am already took some precautionary measures for some of those longer term positions, but not because of the 65 minute analysis, because the analysis that I do, here on my club for daily and weekly, but so let's, so, so the, how are we gonna have our mindset right going into tomorrow? Let's have, let's continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers looking at the price section. We're still got higher lows and higher highs. We're still above my short term. We're still above that rising pivot, but at the same time, there might be some kind of shenanigans to the downside that is a possibility. I'll come back for you, enjoy your evening, and good luck trading tomorrow.